Hey, how's it going guys? So in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up PCSX2 to run EQOA Frontiers with all the networking plugins and stuff working so you can connect to uh, the test server. So the first thing you should do if you don't have an EQOA Frontiers ISO is to go over here and download ImageBurn. Just download one of those, probably just from Mirror One off of their website. And once you get it all installed, you want to go into Image Burn, put your DVD into the disk tray, and just create an image file from the disk. And what that'll do is just copy your disk over to the hard drive, and it'll check for errors and um, just make it so once you boot the game from PCSX2, the load screens and stuff like that will be faster, and you don't have to worry about any errors or anything popping up. So once you get that all set up, Go over to the PCSX2 page and download PCSX2. Um, I'm pretty sure the networking plugin will only work in Windows. Um, never tried it in Linux. So um, what I always do is download the binary version just because it puts all the folders uh, that you need inside of one folder. It just makes it easier to find everything. Um, so if you don't haven't downloaded it, First, get the C++ 2015 uh, redistributable. That's just files from Microsoft that are needed to get PCSX2 to work. So then go over here and download the binary. So this is a zipped folder. So you're going to need like 7-zip. Um, yeah, I think you need 7-zip to extract this. So if you don't have 7-Zip, go to their website and download that too. But once you get it, go over to 7-Zip and just hit Extract 2 like that. And there is the PCSX2 folder. So I like to take out binaries out of there and just call it PCSX2 1.4.0. So take this and cut it or copy it somewhere where you can remember it. Um, I like to put it under my program files. Actually, I usually put under emulators, but since I'm doing, I already have 1.4 in there. So I'm just going to put it right out here under program files. So go into your PCSX2 folder and you want to boot up PCSX2 for the first time. As you can see, once you do that, it's going to create a bunch more folders in there. But yep, just set this up whatever language you want. I'm pretty sure the system default is English, but I like to just set it to English US. So don't really worry about anything in here for right now. We're going to go back through and set up the plugins once we have the emulator all set up. So you're going to see here, you're going to need a BIOS ROM before you can even finish the uh, configuration for PCSX2. So um, the legal way to do this is to mod your PS2, get like a free MC boot memory card or whatever, and rip the BIOS off like that. Um, I'm not going to show you how to do that because it takes a while, and I already have my BIOS ripped off. So I'm going to snag my BIOS and drop it into the BIOS folder. Pretty sure I have it in here. Yep. So as you can see, the BIOS file is actually... Um, it's actually a bunch of, of files, <laughs> so you just want to take all these and copy them right into that BIOS folder right there. Paste all those in there, refresh the list, and then there you go. There's your BIOS. So now you can actually boot up PCSX2. So the very first thing that we're going to want to do is to set up the uh, networking plugin. So you want to go back to this PCSX2 page and go under plugins. And you want to download the Dev9 Gigarazi plugin. So again, it's a zipped folder, so you want to extract that. I already had it. <laughs> but then you just want to go in that folder and take that DLL file, copy that go into the PCSX2 folder again and put that under your plugins folder. So paste that there. So 
So now you want to go back into the plugins up here under config. Go over to Dev9 and select the Gigahertz Dev9 plugin. So also, just so you know, to get that plugin to work, you're going to have to go over here and install WinPCAP. Download the installer right there. Just run the installer. There's going to be a checkbox at the end where it says um, run WinPCAP at startup. Just check that and then go down and uh, do a full system restart on your computer or else the plugin um, is not going to work. It only works after you uh, restarted the system. So then once you've done that, go back here into the Dev9 settings and you're going to want to configure the plugin. You want to enable your Ethernet and then select whatever the name of your Ethernet device is. So I know mine is uh, Intel, the Intel Ethernet connection I'm using. Um, for some reason it seems like with some people switch doesn't work and you have to use bridge. Um, just give it a shot on both of them to see which one you need to get to work. And if you're wondering what the name of your connection is, you can run command prompt. So if you go down under start and hit CMD, you can run this useful little thing called ipconfig. Let's see, does it say what it is under ipconfig? No. Um, maybe ipconfig. All, yep, there we go. So you can see under Ethernet Adapter Ethernet, there's the name right there under Description, Intel Ethernet Connection. Another thing you want to check under here is what your gateway address is. So if your gateway address is the same as this right here, then you can just use the included uh, memory card file that is on our website, and that will get everything through um, connected to our server for you. If for some reason your gateway isn't this, just contact me either on this uh, face or this uh, on the Facebook page or on YouTube, and I can just make another memory card for you, so you don't have to go through all the pain of uh, unpacking the memory card and changing all the files around. Also, another thing is um, if you're using this for like a on a wireless connection, you want to use like a laptop or something like that. Um, I've noticed on both of my laptops it's worked, but for some reason the name of the Ethernet or the uh, wireless Ethernet card isn't there. It just says like PCAP switch windows and there's like three of them. Um, it's hard to tell exactly which one it is. So again, just check all the Windows ones and try to get one that uh, works for you. Another thing I like to do is go into the instructions here. Um, since I have a Haswell CPU, for some reason, um, if I run AVX instructions on it, it like automatically um, overvolts the processor and it's not too big of a deal if you're just um, if your processor isn't overclocked but mine's overclocked so if I use the AVX instructions it makes the uh, the voltages go up to like unsafe sort of levels so I like to just run it as SSE4 and then another thing you can do is actually I think I'll wait until it's in game to do that So under the CDVD selector, you want to go to the ISO selector and then select your EQA Frontiers disk. And then the last thing you need to get this working, well, the last two things, is the DNAS bypass. Download that and the memory card save. As you can see, I've downloaded this stuff all a billion times. <laughs> so again, this all the folders you get from us are always going to be compressed just to save uh, networking space. You want to extract it. You want to take that EE1FCC, go in there, take that pinetch file, copy it, and you want to put that, go back into the PCSX2 folder, and you want to put that under cheats. So basically the the emulator runs it basically as a cheat, but really what it is is just like a one-time patch sort of thing that just um, goes through all of the DNAS commands, and then once it's done, it uh, turns the cheat off.
which is kind of nice. So there's no other, you don't have to worry about the cheat still being activated or anything once it finishes DNAS. And you also want to go and copy over that memory card file. So what is it? EQA local server is what I named it. So again, extract that. I already have it there, so it's going to say if I want to do it again. Oh, I got a bunch of them, don't I? <laughs> so you want to take this EQA local server.ps2 file, and you want to copy that, and again, put it in the PCSX2 folder. Put it under mem cards. Paste that there. Now you got everything ready to go. So I'm just going to boot up my VM just so you can see that it does connect once I have this all set up. So that's opening up. So you want to go under system, enable the cheats so your cheat's going to work. And then you also want to go under memory cards. Make sure that the memory card you want, the EQA local server, is in slot one. So you go insert, and then put it in multi-tap one, port one. Um, another thing you might need is to set up a controller. So you can use, you can just map like a keyboard or something like that to use the controller, but I suggest you get like a 360 controller or something like that that's just like plug and play that you can just plug into a USB port and then go under the plugin settings. And then just go under pad one and then for all of these you just like hit square and then hit whatever button you want to use as the square so like x on the 360 controller and just keep going keep going through all those you don't have to do analog or mouse but the rest of them you're going to want to just click that and then hit a button for it click that and hit a button for it click that and hit a button for it and so on Right, so I'm gonna f so that is good to go. Now I'm gonna fire up PCSX2. Actually, yeah, before I start up all the way, I wanted to go over the graphics plugin settings. So go under Video GS and go under Plugins. So now what I like to do is go under adapter and set it to what your actual hardware device is. It's either going to be a NVIDIA, AMD, or Intel. So if you're using uh, NVIDIA, I recommend that you set it up as OpenGL hardware. For some reason, um, just the OpenGL driver works better with NVIDIA. Um, if you're using AMD or the Intel ones, select Direct3D11 hardware. I like to allow the 8-bit textures. Not really sure what that does, but I always do that. And then um, depending how strong your graphics card is, you can turn up the native resolution. So I'm just going to turn up like four times. Then I'll just go through to make sure that you can see network traffic going back and forth. Another thing that's kind of helpful is if you don't want to sit through all these screens, you can, oh, there's some command you can push in PCSX2 to get to speed up. Is it F9? No, F11, no, F8. I forget what the command is to speed it up. Um, what is it? I guess it is kind of too, just in case you need these. Um, if your computer isn't capable of like running this full speed, you can go and set like view cycle ceiling either to one or two. 
that'll help it uh, speed up a little bit. And what I mean by that is if you see the speed up here isn't at 100%, I'd definitely do that. Set the VU cycle stealing up and either at 1 or 2 until you can get it locked at 100%. Yeah, it's kind of annoying when it's running around super slow. Um, also, don't select the MTVU. It makes the game slow down quite a bit. Yep, but then you can see now that there are packets being sent to the server, and it will connect. Another thing is if, you see right once you get done with initializing, it's going to start going through DNAS. For whatever reason, it's not passing DNAS, that's most likely because you don't have the cheat under there, under the correct folder, or you don't have cheats enabled like that. Alright, that's uh pretty much it. If you have any other questions, uh, just leave a message on either YouTube or through Facebook or something like that, and just, uh, I can help you out. Yep, so I uh, hope you enjoyed watching that, and thank you.